I think it's time to, to call our first panelist uh, to the front. So James, you're welcome. So James, uh, his title of his um, input is Innovating in Higher Education, the Role of Information and Communication Technology in Teaching and Learning. Thank you so much, James. I'll just kick off your, your PowerPoint here. I just want to say, I've discussed with all the panels, there's 15 minutes, um, and I'll keep a rough timing and uh, show when it's five minutes left, and then if I come closer to you, then it's time <laughs> to stop. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, thank you, JP, for the introductions and also for inviting me. And also, uh, thank you to you for coming to listen to uh, what I've got to say. I must confess that... Um, I prepared my slides as if I'll be teaching, so I'll skip some of the text and go to the uh, more nuanced details. And I think uh, to start off, I have uh, put in some questions. And the first one is, are we as universities uh, facing some ex existential threat? And probably part of the answer is could be yes. And uh, looking at the news currently, especially uh, for universities that rely heavily on international students who could not travel because of what's happening now. I read somewhere in the beginning of the year that their university is losing billions, especially in the US and Australia, billions of dollars in income because the students can, cannot make, uh, make it to campus. And if there are other universities that will innovate and take up that space, that means that the particular universities that students wanted to go to or were admitted to go to, but they couldn't go because of what is happening, then they lose on that. Uh, what if then the question to that, uh, to, to, to part of the answer to that, we had innovated enough and we could reach our students as we're doing now because of the circumstances we're in to start off looking at digital offerings and uh, blended or hybrid, uh, hybrid or whatever we want to call them. And then, of course, um, we could do that, but what are the other driving forces? And from a very a purely business perspective, we have to look at some other factors that affect us as universities and the communities that we serve. And for, uh, finally, we look at the question of how do we take advantage? And I think that's where I would like to focus more on. So, if we look at our current market, and I looked at, when I was doing this, I looked at myself uh, in a business school, specifically at the Department of Information Systems. And also our local context. I don't think there's a year since, I think, 2015 or 2016, there about, where we've had to go without a complaint or some form of student protest on fees. And management of universities are hard pressed to look for new sources of funding and with diminishing state funding. Of course, the expectations are also high to do very little, or very, too much with the little we have. Then there's issue of globalization. And with globalization is we're seeing that knowledge is no longer a monopoly of universities. And I'll come to that when we start looking at other offerings that have been in direct competition with what we offer at universities. And um, again, focusing on mainly business schools and specifically us as information systems educators. And also, as an advantage, I think, and this is what would be an opportunity and a great opportunity for us and in Africa is the demand for higher education, or indeed for education and training by the majority of our people. Then, of course, there is 
what has been regarded as the digital development. And in the digital front, especially when we, we, we start talking about education, there are things to do with MOOCs or massively, massively open online courses. And in my discussion with uh, colleagues here, I've heard that they're pushing into that line, either as university or through third party providers, uh, like Get, Get Smarter. And I think so far, every university, probably what it's called, has some form of teaching, like we're doing now, PowerPoint. And therefore, that's probably what we'd call old technology being used. And the blended learning, the hybrid learning that has been mentioned uh, a number of times. Then, I think where we're struggling as mainly information systems, and I, I, I'm not so sure about the other discipline, is the in industry integration. And what are we offering in relation to what is out there in the industry? And if our integration is weak, uh, what we find is that the industry that we serve start developing content and courses that are more appealing to our potential students and therefore we might lose them. And case in point, for example, I, I saw on the Sunday Times this week or this weekend, Apple University has opened and it probably will be taking more of the kind of students would like to, 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 to take. And if it does that, then what happens to us as educators, as university? And I'm worried about my job when I think about that. And then there's also the issue of commercialization. And there are various aspects. Uh, to me, when I look at commercialization, I'm looking at the output of what students in our discipline produce that could be taken to market. And how do we support that? Because it's one thing to be teaching uh, the theory as we know it and to enforce some form of research. But if that's not going to be commercialized and our students have some form of an income while they study, I don't think we'll be able to compete with, say, the upper university that's coming up or any other uh, uh, company or based courses. So those are some of the things that uh, on the networking and partnership with industry we need to contend with. And of course, we're not operating outside regulation. And I think to some extent, our environment is very highly regulated. And I'm not so sure that the form of regulation is good enough for the kind of things that we'd like to do. And again, looking at what we're doing at various IT-based courses or programs at universities. Uh, first, for example, if we need to change our programs, the shortest time possible for you to be able to change drastically your offering is 18 months. That is, if you have to go through the full accreditation. And if we were to compete with a company like Google, like Apple, when they coming to offer those courses, then clearly 18 months, we would be out of business. And I must say that I'm not against regulation. I'm not against uh, bureaucracy, but I'm against the form of bureaucracy that uh, steps us behind and <coughs> some, somehow curtails our ability to be responsive to the demands of our market and the industry we are operating in. And of course, uh, that related to 
the speed at which technology grow. I think if our regulations, as they always do, lag 10, 20 years, the technologies that we are advocating to use, then we have a, a challenge. And I think uh, uh, probably one of the weekend challenge, uh, challenges that we need to address is how do we move regulation at the same speed as innovation. And of course, the other things, especially in higher education regarding uh, reporting. And I think one of the main challenges, especially for higher education in South Africa, is the funding model and reporting. And for particular disciplines, especially IT, where probably a combination of a number of short, shorter courses that are impactful are needed, then if you go through the short courses uh, avenue or route, then our subsidies are very limited. And uh, we're seeing this uh, curtail our move because for us to get the subsidy, uh, we have to get degree enrolled students, yet for us to be responsive, to get more students who can't pay or who can't afford to attend these courses, then we have something there broken in the middle. Do we, how do we ad uh, admit students who can barely afford? So we rely on government funding, and that funding requires us to enroll them for a degree. Degree takes four, three, four years, and in most cases it's four, five, or a three-year degree, and that holds us our, uh, most of our revenue. And of course, um, the other challenge, and uh, probably we've started seeing it, uh, especially reading again the Sunday Times, on the issue of immigration. Uh, the people who would ideally be able to pay for higher education, Pardon. sorry, um, then I'll skip most of that, but I'll finish this. The people who would ideally be able to pay for higher education in Africa are going abroad. So then here we are left with most of our students who can't really afford. And that's the challenge that we, we're facing now. And how do we deal with that? I think now uh, from there, I'll skip uh, to my last slides so that I can uh, talk to some of the solutions. Uh, I'm sorry, I think uh, 15 minutes is uh, quite short. <laughs> and I think... Uh, <laughs> okay, I still have five minutes to complete. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think uh, in both our research and offering, uh, we have an opportunity to have courses, even if the short courses like the ones we'll drive through our third party providers and partners like Get Smarter, courses that are more appealing to the market and those that would be more appealing to our potential partners so that instead of them starting those courses in the organization, they can partner with us uh, to do the courses. And I think that would be a win-win for them and us we get the revenue, we get the students who can't pay, uh, paid for by the companies. And uh, similar to this network, I think it's more important, important uh, building on that to build also on partnership with industry. And that's more important and more urgent for those of us in information systems. And of course, use these technologies. It's pointless for us to lament as educators, especially in IT, that you can't say one thing that we've been saying for, uh, for quite some time, you can't teach people programming online. You need people to be in front of a computer and tell them what to do. But with experiments we've seen, actually, you can do that. It's just how you package, how you approach it that might differ. So. Some of the opportunities is that we have, ICTs will drastically lower the cost 
or will help us drastically lower the cost of offering. I didn't look at the, uh, the academic process of teaching and learning, but we could look at the activities within the teaching and learning process and look at where we can manage costs, and it could be huge. Of course, uh, part of the cost management, and I've seen some, uh, one of the presenters will be talking about the role of uh, mobile in education, is distributing cost. Previously, we used to buy computer and install computer labs for students. Nowadays, a number of students have computers, and therefore we can distribute the cost to other, other people. And with immigration and brain drain and labor losses, I think we can counter that in retaining the networks even for people who are abroad or across countries to share their knowledge and content. And this is possible using these technologies as we're doing today. And here comes one of the challenges that we really need to deal with. And that's differentiated offering. And with differentiated offering, I mean here also differentiated offering depending or based on the demands of our industry partners. And probably here it's how we start thinking, how do we package our degree programs? Do we still need uh, minimum times for degree programs? Or we could say, uh, you can come every year to do one module for 10 years and you'll get your degree and continue working. And how would the funding model for universities work? And I think at this point, um, our responses to dealing with crisis is much more important. I, and I think as people who are technology enthusiasts, we should take advantage of crisis like there is now. Of course, we have our own crisis like in other universities that are being closed and academic programs are not running because of student process, but what would happen uh, when, say, the coronavirus becomes a reality and we have to close? Do we continue? Do we take advantage? And how do we take advantage of it to make sure that uh, digital learning or digital enhanced learning is taking place? Thank you very much. Sorry, uh, my apologies for the speed at which I've had to go 